Uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone. Uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another uh, he Joe, accumulates if you're listening, you stupid followers on, the, like a, on Twitter. Those guys fucking that from pathetic, Long Island so please, nobody listened to anything but he's involving years a guy old. named Joe Cronin because it's just so fucking sad. Sometimes I do that, you know, I don't know. You know, tonight was what we wanted it to be, man. What we needed it to be. I said this in my video earlier tonight, man. I was like, please give me a 7 or 8 out of 10 AEW. And based on what it was looking like, you know, it felt like we were going to get that. Like, hey, man, we might get a 7 to 8 out of 10 show. And I think we we did something, whether it was a 7 to you or an 8. thought it might have been a 7. It was good solid seven really good stuff for the most part Ugh, yeah if you're one of the 500 people who saw my video from earlier today you would have seen me say that that basically I thought you know this there's going to be two really good matches here. I didn't even know about the Battle Royal. That started the show, and I didn't even know about that for whatever reason. I knew about, you know, I said Darby Allen, Samoa Joe. And this is just for the people that didn't watch me earlier today. I was like, man, Darby Allen, Samoa Joe, that's going to be pretty awesome. I got to check that out. And then the Acclaimed versus FTR in the main of, or yeah, I didn't know it was going to be the main event, but the tag team match. Like, right there, those two matches are probably going to be good. So, right there, I'm like, okay, we're going to have a good show as far as those go. Some of the stuff we're leading up to winter is coming and whatever else. And then, you know, the Battle Royal was fun. And then on top of that, I'm like, well, we're going to get an MJF promo. Now, I know we're going to get a Ricky Starks promo, too. And Ricky Starks, you know, Ricky Starks started off great on his promo. I mean, this was obviously done 
winged. He just winged this mostly, obviously, because he started off strong, and then he kind of like went into like ranting over like too repeating things too much, and then he screwed up and said like I'll put my asshole on you or something like that. It was weird, but then he had to he had to, he finished it off pretty well, but you know it doesn't matter because he was so crazy and speaking so loudly and screaming that he held his own with MJF, you know, in many ways. And he did a great job because, and MJF did a great job because MJF was able to piss the crowd off, right? Or was able to get that reaction from the crowd he gets. But then he was also able to help get, you know, Ricky Starks over. So that, that was great too. So, you know, you get a couple of matches that are really pretty good. <clears throat> and then... You get a really good promo interaction between Ricky Starks and MJF. You get a hell of a buzzed uh, greeting for uh, the Rhodes, the other Rhodes brother, for Dustin Rhodes. You get a battle royal to start the show, which is always kind of fun once in a while when they do it. So, you know, pretty good battle royal. It's not the worst one they've had. It's not the best one they've had. But it was a, uh, you know, it was something to do, and it was fun. And then in the end, the ending was great too. I forget the moment. I mean, the Matt Hardy thing, like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna go my own way. Now we're gonna, we're gonna get Ricky Stark. I'm gonna help the boring guy in the in the Christmas tights beat up Ricky Stark. And when he, you know, the biggest pop came when Ricky Starks did the, uh, the out of nowhere step up tornado DDT. Starks. Because nobody saw it coming. Oh, Ricky just by the head. He Shut did it out of nowhere head. right here. Let's watch it again real quick. Let's listen. That was really slick listen by to this. Starks. He ducks the clothesline. Oh, Ricky Starks, DDT, Starks. no. Tornado, oh, DDT. DDT. Oh, Ricky just grabbed my See, it was, oh, my God. It was such a great mix there. Listen to the crowd as Hardy over the top rope. Really and Ethan Page firing away. He ducked the clothesline. DDT now has Tornado DDT. Oh, Ricky, just Ricky Starks plants all ego, all head, all the ego in that head across the mat. And Starks. Oh, he moved out of the way. A kick to the back of the head. It might have knocked Starks out. Man, the crowd sounds amazing. The crowd sounds great right here. They're buzzing. They're feeling so good. Starks, he picks him up. Thun no, reverse down. It's like, dude, listen. He tried to lawn dart Ricky Starks out of the ring. Starks held on. Does Ricky Starks have Gorilla Glue on his hands? And then I love that MJF, his music hits immediately. Fuck your celebration. Fuck your celebration. Bro, you would have thought MJF just won the match. Ricky Starks wins and then just boom. Listen to how... He's being announced as the winner and MJF's music is already playing. Dude, what a great start to this show. So, so the whole... Battle Royal is warming you up and warming you up until the 15-minute mark where Ricky Starks just goes nuts, right? And he eliminates him. Well, you know, MJF's not even giving Ricky Starks a second to even celebrate or realize that he just won this Battle Royal. And here comes MJF to spoil the celebration of Ricky Starks. The AEW World Heavyweight Champion. Triple B in tow throws a piece of gum at the crowd. What a disgusting son of a bitch he is. Dude comes down to the ring and tosses his gum at a fan. <laughs> Bro, he threw his gum at a fan. He doesn't get any better than that, bro. Dude chucked his gum, his gum at a fan in the crowd. 
doesn't get any better than that. MJF looking like he's six foot two as he comes down to the ring, and he's not. But he looks like he is. MJF, the belt is gigantic. MJF seems gigantic. And Ricky Starks holds his own in a promo with MJF. Now, I still think, obviously, MJF is just so much more... MJF is so much more flushed out, right, than Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks is still like a really good TV show pilot, right? Like he's a great pilot, but he's he's still working out the kinks to figure out exactly how great it's going to be. MJF is already in season six or whatever, but that's fine. The point is that the two of them had a good interaction and a good exchange, and it was great stuff between the two of them. Man, it pumped me up. I just wish I was at ringside on commentary for this show and for almost all the shows because let me tell you something, the excitement level is off the page in my brain. I'm having a fun time watching it on TV in, in the comfort of my own home. Uh, you know, Can you imagine sitting next to this stuff in the atmosphere? I know how excited I get when I'm at indie matches. When I'm calling indie matches, I'm excited. But this stuff... Man, if I was Excalibur, I would get it so excited, I would rip my own mask off my head. You know, if I was Excalibur, I'd just be like, Argh! I'd just rip my mask right off my head, man. I'd be so excited if I was Excalibur. But, hey, you know, it is what it is. Um, they are. Dude, Look at that scarf, like too, by the really way. Does. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Zeus, my rim so, you know, we're back to good old things here. Anyway, bottom line, great promo. I know Ricky Starks did have a couple of, like, he got so excited and amped up. You know, he said a couple of things that didn't make sense, like, I'll put my ass on you or something. That's the best one. I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something like, I'll put my ass on you. And I, I don't I don't 100% remember, but it, we, we, I'm sure we'll hear it. Dude. It remains is that I've been here busting my ass. You want to talk about responsibility? Let's talk about the fact that you avoid responsibility. You avoid any time. I do wish he went in, into this a little bit more. He was like, he's like, yeah, you want to talk about the fact of responsibility? You avoid responsibility. Huh? When you don't get things exactly the way you want them, you take a little ball and you go home for two months, three months, four months, five months, whatever it takes. You know, if I if I went home every time I didn't get my way, I'd have never made it here. I wouldn't have made it down the street. I might have not made it to be able to take a shit in the bathroom. Every single day, things don't go the way that I want them to 100%. But you know what I do? I keep fighting and tearing and clawing. I will not be denied. And I won't stop. Until I get what I want. But you, a little roadblock comes along and you stop. You shelf yourself because you're a prick. You're a narcissist. You're a scumbag. You're a spoiled brat. You use every advantage and every excuse. All I do is use my adrenaline, my blood, my energy, my sweat, and my tears, my passion. That's what I use. Like, and he just went... Fully into how MJF left the company for like whatever to cry, have a you know throw a crybaby or whatever you know I might have gone into that a little bit more but Ricky Starks did a really good job of being able to hold his own against MJF he did go off the rails a little bit like I said and bloody da he he sort of messed up a couple of times because he was so raging you know, it was maybe like one or two things he stumbled on but it was so good because nobody really noticed and he had so much passion that it didn't matter. You know what I mean? He could have said things wrong. It was the fact that he was delivering it so well, it doesn't matter. Um, but 90% of it was delivered great. So, you know, in WWE, though, they get a script and they go out there and they read from the robotic script and they screw that up five times. And nothing is worse than, than, than a, a, you know, a lame script, not a lot of passion, clearly being uh, read lines, rehearsed lines, and they screw it up like three to five times. But Ricky Starks goes out there, and he shoots from the hip like a psycho, and, you know, he has a couple of messes, whatever, and everyone's talking about how it's a great promo. I mean, that's the difference of what it's like when you can actually deliver something with passion, like Ricky Starks did. Type of pressure. I show up to sign meet and greets where you, you don't care. You just blow it off because, hey, darker than the rest of your body. 
By the way, uh, Ricky Starks, uh, so I don't know what the nose darker than the rest of your body meant. Ricky Starks. Um, kind of sounds like Austin Theory a bit. I never realized how much the two of them have a bit of a similar t t uh, thing there. You know, I didn't I didn't realize that. A little bit of a similar take from the two of them. You know what I mean, you all have decided to take your hard-earned money, oh, shit, and to fund my show, to fund what I do, the to fund way. what I believe in, to fund my godly ass. JCS Army. The sound waves donating. Donate to me. Donate to me. A big $31 dono. Acknowledge me. Coming in from Soundwave. From the big dog is here too. It's the wrong company. Texas crowds are always fantastic. Yeah. Main event between FTR and Acclaim lived up to the hype unlike Herschel Walker's political career. Oh. Can someone check up on Darby Allen to make sure that dude isn't dead because that spot was scary? Oh, uh, which one? The one where he dove? Dude, at the beginning, Soundwave, thank you so much for the $31, man. Soundwave 92 coming in hard and clutch, bro. Soundwave 92 coming in hard and clutch. And here's the thing. Yeah, Darby not only, you know, I'm sure Darby was thinking, listen, I'm going to dive. I'm going to flip. My legs are going to smash into the gate. And then I'll land on my back on the pad. So it's like, yeah, it's probably going to hurt a bit and things could go wrong. But, you know, it'll look awesome. But what he didn't realize, I think, is that he was going to hit the guardrail and the guardrail was already moved a little bit too far out of the way. And then the guardrail was going to move immediately. And he was going to crash land over the pad and come down tailbone first on the cement. So that's a bit of a problem. That was, a, that was rough to see. And I think Samoa Joe was giving him as much because Samoa Joe clearly gave him as much time as possible because he could have gotten in the ring. He could have thrown him in the ring. He could have waited a second, looked around and then done something. But Samoa Joe knew, you know, I think that this guy just, you know, he probably is hurt or at least dealing with some kind of shock pain from hitting the concrete the way he did because he hit the fucking concrete, bro. He hit the concrete. So Samoa Joe gave him as much time to rest as possible, you know, which, you know, it didn't really make sense, but in the scheme of things, but it, you know, makes sense as a human being. Cause, uh, you know, this guy, this guy was jacked up bad. And we'll talk about that in a minute because before, before that happened, we had a little John Moxley promo in the back. There's not enough of that around here. There's too much talking. This is all elite wrestling, not all elite talking. There is no Blackpool microphone club. This is combat. This is the sport of kings. Tonight, myself, Wheeler, Claudio. This weekend at Final Battle, this Friday night on Rampage, we bring back 100 proof in your face ass kicking wrestling. Jericho Appreciation Society. I'm so over the Jericho Appreciation Society. I'm gonna be out there tonight. I, I wish right there that he said that you know you're gonna you're gonna be appreciating the ass whooping that I put on you. You know what I mean? You're gonna be appreciating this week and last week and every other week before next week because you actually had your fucking mobility. You're not going to have mobility after I'm done with you. I'm sick of talking, and you're the ringleaders of this shit. You know, I love it, though. Good stuff by Moxley, though. 
Just to make sure there's no sports entertainment shenanigans. And this weekend, we put the JAS in our rear view mirror for good. Hangman Page, you want another piece? You know where to find me. A little cringy, but it was it was what it was. Then Darby comes out, and then they have their match that we just talked about, which was which was good, man. It started at 35 minutes, had a big commercial in the middle, um, and it ended around the 47-minute mark when Joe, uh, you know, so you get about 16-minute match there, which was great. That's exactly what I was looking for, especially when it comes to, you know what I mean, like the um, a title being on the line, something important being on the line. You know, when it comes to that, it's super important. And we got that. We got that 16 minutes, man. We got that 16 minutes that we needed in that match. And that's what I wanted. That's why I talked about that earlier today, um, you know, in when I made my video earlier today. Like, please, that's got to be a good match, right? Like, this has got to be a good lineup tonight. It's got to be. And it was. It was good. Um, we got the man himself on top, Soundwave 92, dropping the, uh, $31, a $31 sex bomb to start this show here. Let me just get him. There we go. It's a little brighter now. Now it's sexy. You know what I mean? Now it's sexy. It's nice and wet. And, uh, you know, MJF coming down with the big belt, looking good. Loving it. Loving it. By the way, uh, we do have the Christmas donation back. I got too drunk on Christmas time, or uh, on Christmas. Or what the hell is the uh, donation amount? Somebody asked the other day. Um, it's like, what is it? What is it? I don't even remember. Hold on a minute. Somebody asked me this the other day. I got to add it to the dono list. My bad. How you guys doing? On a Wednesday night, by the way. How's everybody feeling? It is twenty five twenty five. So we got. Um, the twenty five twenty five donation twenty five for Christmas I guess twenty fifth day of December oh so twenty five twenty five is the dono link my bad I I, don't, I couldn't remember here it is too drunk on Christmas I used to be a thirty something so don't get confused it used to be thirty something there it is I gotta put it in the thing it's not in there right now but I will put it in there. Uh, Darby Allen, Samoa Joe, great match. What was the best match of the night is really the question. What, what do people think was the best match of the night? What was your favorite match of the night? That is a big question, um, and we'll get to the answer to that in a few. I'm going to leave this briefcase, leave this briefcase right, right, here. right here. Allison Tukwa. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Uh, uh, I'm gonna leave this briefcase right here. Son, run, run, you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fucking fat bitch. Don't you think I'm a fucking. It's getting big, it's getting hard. Oh my god, I'ma put it in like a yard. Why did would the announcer tell Max that he or someone that they beat up William Regal then William Regal was on the screen telling them but then there's talk about him go on to WWE don't know if that's true or rumors. Yeah, I I I, I, I caught that, uh that you know we'll see if there's an update on William Regal. Yes, this is a great that's such a great point, Allison. I know what you're trying to say here. They sort of built it as like William Regal is still in the story. But the other day, Tony Khan answered questions about this. Tony Khan literally talked about William Regal. William Regal asked for his uh, release early from the company. So William Regal will be leaving um, sometime officially within the next 30 to, to 60 days. He'll be gone. If not next week, I don't, we don't really know. But it looks like William Regal is gone indefinitely now. Maybe he's got one more thing to film or something, and then he's gone. And the stipulation is, and I said this, I, I said this weeks ago, and people made fun of me that I was lying, 
even other people have gone on to say it's bullshit or whatever. It's not bullshit. Tony Khan literally said it the other day and told the story. So, you know, Tony Khan's mother was sick last year. He dealt with something like this. Um, you know, Regal, you know, wants to be at home with his family in Florida. Um, asked him, told him the situation, asked for his release basically like this. Like, can I please, whatever. He's been there nine months. And so when he goes back to NXT, William Regal will work for NXT and WWE probably, but he'll be working in the background. So it's like he basically won't um, he won't be allowed to be on TV, like to be the GM of NXT like tomorrow. Um, but, you know, it's understood that I guess like if he's in a backstage segment in the background, it's not a big deal, but he just can't be like on the TV. But he can work backstage as like a trainer, a producer, do whatever for about a year, it looks like. So he'll have a, a, a year um, backstage, and then after that, he can be on TV again if they want him to be on TV. That's just a tiny concession that he made with Tony Khan. Tony Khan explained all this in the press conference earlier today. I talked about this a week ago and two weeks ago, and I already knew this because of the people that reported it. I was convinced it was true, and I was talking about it like it was true, and I don't, I don't always talk about everything like it's true. But I believed it to be true, and I, you know, people said you're, you know, and when people say I'm wrong, it's like, it's not that I'm wrong. I'm just reporting the news, and I, and yes, I did decide to believe that news, but it's still not coming from me, but I believed it, and I was convinced, and I was not criticizing it because I was like, yeah, I think that that's what's happening. Seems to be credible from everybody that's talking about it, and it was. You know, people were shitting on me and saying it was bullshit and whatever, and it was not bullshit. So, um, you know, that's interesting that, that things uh, worked out. I think Regal did a good job of trying to put everybody over the way he could in the company, and I, I, it was fun. It was fun for a little bit, you know. Now back to, uh, you know, making – this is better for Regal's personal life, and that's all that really matters at this point. So for for him probably, and you know Tony did the right, Tony really did the right thing here. He really did. Um, good on Tony for doing the right thing. You all have oh. decided to take your hard-earned money and to fund my show, to fund what I do, the ghost, to fund what I believe from the in, coast. to fund my godly ass oh, JCS man. Army the ghost is here donate to me scissor me acknowledge me Was so good Tuckwab spoke on it instead of Green Bay Lowell. I thought Starks was going to say two <laughs> remarks when he said no's. Oh my god, dude. AEW was so good that Tuckwab spoke on it instead of talking about Green Bay. <laughs> dude. Oh my god, Soundwave. I mean, the ghost. That was Ghost from the Coast. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> bro. Venti Cinco. That's how good AEW was tonight. Allison didn't give a shit about Green Bay tonight because AEW was that good. That is hilarious. <laughs> Yo, dude. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, I'm going to pass out. Uh, 251 votes have come in so far about what you thought about AEW tonight. And 49% of you is what's winning it good. Good show. 33% said it was awesome, like The Miz. 72%, 7, what is it, 72% or so, giving it a thumbs up. It's pretty good. I actually, I actually would think higher. I would think it was an 80%, 85% tonight.
But some people did say blah down there. Just about no one thought it was crap. I mean, I thought it was a solid show tonight. Very good show. 7.5 out of 10, I think, for me. Um, you know, it had a great promo. Had a couple okay promos on the side. You know, I had a couple of matches that were, were uh, all right-ish forgettable. You know, the Cesaro match wasn't the greatest thing ever. It was just like an okay little match. Uh, I thought the women, you know, um, did what they did. Now let's hear uh, from Regal and see exactly where we're going with this stuff with Regal. Because this is what Allison was talking about in her donation. Interview that I did with him a few weeks back. That may explain some of this. If we can roll that for the fans. It might explain some of this. But yeah, so this is not this is not William Regal from tonight, but it's an interview with him from weeks ago. And here, and for everyone at home as well. Take a look. Oh, wow. William Regal, my longtime friend. 30 years in January 30, 30, coming up. 30 years in January coming up. I Full gear was... You little creme brulee, I'd like to melt in you. Go. Welcome to the desk. Thank you very much, Taz. Hello, sir. Mr. Shivani. Hello. Man in the mask. How are you today? Doing quite well, you sir. You little creme brulee, you. I'd like to crack you and let you just melt in me. I would, honestly. Already. Oh. Yikes. We're rocking and rolling. Little. But I just wanted to talk to you about how that all transpired and what was going through your mind. We talked about this, and John Carlo's the only person that I trust to film this. Right. People are only going to see this if something bad happens to me. And when you're somebody like me right. and spend your life being as horrible as I have, you're always <laughs> expecting something bad to happen. Yeah, you are the villain of villains. Well, MJF, I took great exception to, to what he did to you. Put you and he seems to be mad about emails and he's right. complaining. So I gave him what he wanted. Okay. He's world champion. Yeah. You know that old saying, Tony, be careful what you wish for. Because right. now, yeah. everybody in this company is going to be chasing him. Right. I realized several months ago that the three main members of the Blackpool Combat Club didn't meet, need me around anymore. I, I'm, I'm surplus to requirements, as they say. Okay. But I knew they wouldn't let me go. Okay. But I needed to show them why they don't need me, and I needed to show them why they can teach Wheeler to be the best professional wrestler in the world, because they've all got that capability. But you have to lead by example. Hopefully, and I know he will, because John Moxley's a very, very calculating man. Yeah. He'll understand this. Okay. The reason I did what I did and to lead by example was to teach you the final thing that I could ever teach you. Always stay one step ahead and make sure you always keep eyes in the back of your head. I'm Blackpool Combat Club till the day I die. Fellas, it's been emotional. All right, guys, and again, I recorded that with him two weeks ago no you didn't <laughs> i probably recorded that tonight or last week rather so they they probably recorded that as his goodbye you know basically solidifying him going back to wwe to work in a backstage segment or a backstage role rather with uh wwe you know and so it ended up being what we thought it was going to be. And like I said, it does sound like a video of a kite lime of something they play after somebody dies. Um, please hit the like button, guys, too, if you can. If you want to help out, get to 100 quickly here. Um, so at this point, you know, an hour and 20 minutes into the show, it's pretty good stuff there. And now uh, an Aleister Black promo I missed. And once again, like I said, there was a, a lot of little promos sprinkled throughout the show. And, of course, the best being MJF and Ricky Starks in the ring promo following the Battle Royal, which was good. And, again, this show gave me everything I wanted it to give me, man. In fact, this show, you know, they're building better. 
there, there's a better build to winter is coming than some of these shows that they've put on and some pay-per-views that they've put on. You know, quite honestly, that their building to winter is coming better than some pay-per-views. Really good stuff uh, as we move forward here, in my opinion. Let's hear from uh, Alistair or Malachi Black, rather. This company has allowed itself to be corrupted. Corrupted by people that point fingers at others while still holding the shovel in their hands that they use to dig the graves for others. And now it is sick and it is dying. And perhaps it is time for it is myself dying. and the house to put down this corruption. Miss Hart, what is the crime? The crime is treason. Mr. Matthews, what is the verdict? The verdict? War. And Mr. King, what is the sentence? It's as if you throw a side of beef to a pack of wild dogs. We will tear the meat from the bones. The sentence is extermination. So it has been decided. So anyone that has an issue with what we have done over the past two weeks or anything that's been said here, well, next week, Wednesday, come one. Come, come on. on. Still to come. To I mean, you know what my problem is with Aleister Black or Malachi Black and his group? is the bark is so serious. The bark is so calculated and theatrical. But the reality is so ordinary that I find these promos almost sort of silly. Because like I just said, I find Aleister Black and his group to be ordinary in the ring with results. And in a result-based business, a loud bark is forgotten about as quick as as a regular night. I mean, like, I don't know, bro. I don't think twice about these guys. Because they come out with the mystique, but then they... It's sort of like Lance Archer, right? Like Lance Archer, one of the biggest barks there is. Everybody dies. Then the guy goes out there and gets rolled up and loses a match. So, Alice, or I keep calling him... See, I don't even remember his name anymore. Malachi Black, if he is not having some kind of life crisis or panic attack in his real life, it's going to keep him out of wrestling again for another three months or whatever. Um, you know, it's hard to take him seriously. He really, I don't know if they realize this, but what needs to happen for Malachi Black at this point is there needs to be no promos, no like mystical dark promos or threatening what ifs and here's what I'm going to do. None of that stuff. There just needs to be Malachi Black going out there with a theatrical entrance and kicking ass and being a badass in the ring. He needs to step away from the theatrics of the promo and the darkly lit backstage stuff and just stop that for a little bit and just get back to showing up in the ring over and over again and, and being impressive that way because right now it's just it's too silly. Because the guy, like, had to leave and he was in his car, like, wrestling fans, I've got to go. Like, I mean, it's just hard to, you know, sift through, you know, believing that, if you know what I mean. Anyway, the the Christmas, the I got too drunk on Christmas time donation is $25.25. $25.25. Speaking of 25, the ghost from the coast just dropped 25 bucks. Let's get back to the donos. 
and it's time to scissor me. Just scissor me. But I do like Malachi Black. I like the group. I like Malachi Black. It's just I. We got to get rolling here. It's just a little promo. I mean, I'm freaking out over nothing. I hope that we revisit Ricky versus MJF at some point down the road. I know he is losing next week, but that promo can't be cut by just anybody. Yeah. That's money. Also, the Regal recorded promo felt so fucking upsetting to listen to man like shit man. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I'm fine with it. It's a, you know, I've seen, we've seen, I, you know, we've seen stuff like that done in wrestling. You know what it kind of reminded me of? It kind of reminded me of when Gorilla Monsoon was, uh, I'm sorry, when Bobby the Brain Heenan was written off of TV. I didn't even know he was being written off of TV, right? You got to understand, I was a kid. You know what I mean? I was a, I was a nine-year-old kid, and I know that I was nine, which is really young, right? But for me, Bobby the Brain Heenan had been the announcer forever at that time. So I know that sounds crazy. Like, you're like, Joe, you were nine. But since I was four years old or so, I was used to listening to Bobby the Brain Heenan from, you know, f- around five years old, probably more, more accurate, but five, six, seven, eight, nine, five years of my life, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five years of my life and five years of watching Every WrestleMania, every video I could, loving Bobby Heenan, loving him without knowing it. I didn't like, I you know, I liked Hogan and he would put down Hogan. Um, but I loved, I didn't know it, but I loved Bobby the Brain Heenan. I really did. I was used to him and I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed Gorilla Monsoon. And for those that don't know, Bobby the Brain Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon obviously the the best commentary team ever besides like maybe a few others that you know like Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler and you know a couple others but they'd done so many skits together and so many things and so many times Bobby the Brain Heenan would bash Gorilla call him a you know but go eat some bananas you Gorilla idiot you know you know Monsoon you're such an idiot you know that type of stuff and finally Monsoon like snapped on air one or whatever it seemed like was the story the monsoon was like, that's it, that's it, you're out of here, you're out of here. And, you know, I didn't even know Gorilla Monsoon had the authority to throw Bobby the Brain Heenan out of WWE. So, you know, Gorilla bring, throws, bo- literally throws Bobby the Brain Heenan out the door. And I remember Bobby the Brain Heenan saying something like, my belongings, my belongings. And, like, he looked around and then there was a shot of him outside. He'd been thrown out. And the next thing you know... He was really gone. And every week I thought, where's Bobby the Brain Heenan? You know, and like, when's he coming back? And w- wait a minute, like, that he really got thrown out like weeks ago? Like, I thought that, you know, even in my mind, I just thought like, like he'd be back, you know, and he wasn't back. He never came back. And so that, um, that same um, situation, Regal, that promo that we just heard from William Regal, reminded me of Bobby the Brain Heenan's, you know, last TV appearance, where he had to sort of say goodbye in a weird way, and that's what you know Heenan being thrown out was doing, you know, but it was something like that. I'm <laughs> forgetting fucking my belongings. I bet, I bet you that clips on YouTube. Oh yeah, here it is. I found Building it. your business. Wow. Why am I getting a commercial? Hey, what is it? The apes coming. Oh, wait a I mean, my buddy- the apes coming, Heenan says. Well, how about that? Welcome, Gorilla Mon- oh, that's right. Gorilla Monsoon might have been the commissioner at the time, and maybe, I don't know. And uh Vince McMahon was doing commentary with Bobby, though. That's what's, I forgot about that. Soon one of the all-time greats, Gorilla. Good to have you out here. And I don't know if you heard some of the comments earlier by, by Bobby the Brain Heenan. I don't believe he followed your warning, Gorilla. I got good news for you and I got bad news for you. No. Congratulations on the free trip. The free 
trip. He won a free trip. Yeah, this is a gorilla throwing Heenan out. I'll never forget. Gorilla throwing uh throwing Heenan out of the building. With the big Ico Pro signs behind him. You can't even see anything because, the see, WWE would have a heart attack nowadays. Look at how dark it is. See that? They would never allow you to be this darkly lit now. <laughs> you know? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Throws Heenan out of there. My bull hungings, yeah. My bull hungings, they're history. This is nice stuff. End of story. Spoon? A roll of toilet paper. My bull hungings. A son. Hey. You going to LaGuardia? But, but I want to talk about Heenan's jacket. It doesn't get any better than that that fluorescent yellow and pink raw logo on Heenan's uh, jacket. Whatever happened to that jacket, I wonder. That looked great, by the way. That was beautiful. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, the women came out and they did their thing. Jade, I mean, they all look good. It was all right. A little filler. It was really just, you know, let's get to this goddamn Acclaim match. And it was great. So there was, like I said, and the Acclaimed was done, I thought it was done perfectly, almost. Like, the match was done really well. There's a lot of things you could actually talk about in the match that happened. And then, after the match, you know, the faces, you know, scissoring and just getting along and stuff like that. That made sense. That was nice. And so I, uh, you know, I enjoyed that as well. In a second, I'm going to go over to Discord. I see Jesse in there. I'm gonna leave this but first, I'm going to leave this right briefcase here. right here. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Allison, I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Uh, uh, I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Son, run, run, you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch! You kind of big, you kind of huge. Run, you fucking You want to lose? Bitch. You like a moose, the caboose. Don't you think I'm a fucking terrorist? You kind of big, you fat bitch. You kind of large, you fat bitch. Your tracks today. Never run so hard yeah. in all your damn life. You better run hard. Allison, Run, thank you, you Allison. Bitch. I thought that's why Sting was with him, like a mentor, like a teacher. I'm surprised Sting didn't uh -huh. come running out. What do I have? What the hell's going on? Allison Tuckwab, thank you. What the hell's going on? You raised a piece of shit. Brian Cage and Lance Archer should form team called Guys Who Fucking Suck Ass. Red Sox spent $105 million on some rice cooker. Stark's Aww. reference was to MJF being a brown nose Joe. Matt Hardy and Dustin Rhodes in a battle royal? Thanks. <laughs> oh my god, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> I didn't even get to hear all that. I just immediately knew that was ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? Holy crap. Holy crap. Oh, that was funny. That was funny.
Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me back up just a minute. But if you guys want to donate, uh, the link is in the top of the chat. It's posted at the top of the chat. If you want to donate directly to that, uh, that will help me and my show and, and me and everything we're doing here. So feel free to drop a dono. And the links are down below. There's a Christmas time one, $25, $25, $0.25. $0.25. Nyla Rose's gynecologist said, Brian Cage and Lance Archer should form a team called Guys Who Fucking Suck Ass. Red Sox spent $105 million on some rice cooker. <laughs> Starks, <laughs> oh my God. Matt Hardy and Dustin Rhodes in a battle royal. Thanks, I now feel old as shit. Yo, Jesse, what's up, man? You want to get weird with daddy? Hey, come on, brother. Seem like you like AEW tonight. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, oh, I mean, overall, I thought it was good. Uh, like, I didn't, usually I don't think it's quite as consistent. I thought it was pretty consistent tonight with decent. Yeah, I thought it was, I mean, like, so I, I, had to, I didn't realize it until I saw the lineup preview this morning. When I did my video, I was actually reading the, the preview live. I, I hadn't read it prior. And so I was like, eh, I don't know what AEW is going to do tonight. You know, winter's coming, you know. And then I read it and was like, oh, shit. It, it started with when I saw Samoa Joe and Darby Allen. I went, okay, that's going to be pretty good. Dude, that was fucking pretty good. Like I, I enjoyed that one. I got excited when I saw that on paper. And then... When I saw the acclaimed against FTR tag team match, I went ooh, and then I saw you know pro you know MJF's probably gonna have a promo, and I'm like, all right, you know what? Right there, that's a solid one hour of entertainment at least, right there. Mm -hmm. So you know, and and the rest of the show did you know, fly, you know it didn't do as well, you know, but the battle royal to start the show was great. I just thought it had good flow, like you said, battle royal started the yeah, show. It did flow. The, the the promos of Stark and MJF to end that, you know, and then eventually. Yeah, I thought Ricky did a good job. Like, uh, yeah. I, didn't, I mean, I didn't expect him to do such a long and, like, fiery. Like, he fucking just went for it. Yeah, he just went off. Uh -huh. He probably went a little too off, but it still was great. It was just because it sounds more authentic yeah. than shit we're used to hearing that same scripted shit, so. Yeah, like, I mean, fuck it. If they can get other people to... They need more people besides just Starks that they can build up on the same... That can at least try and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with MJF because he needs people to... Otherwise, what's the point, you know? It's yeah. like, I don't know who else they really have that is uh, going to be able to be a believable opponent, you know? Yeah, there was, people got to hold their own on the mic or he's just going to shit on them. And then it's like, what? That's the same problem that happened when... When Reigns couldn't cut a promo and John Cena cuts a promo on Reigns and it's like, well, John Cena is still the best promo. What the hell else is anyone else going to do at this point, you know? And so they need other people to be able to bring it. And it worked. The fans liked it. They, they It's like they like MJF, but they are, they're cool with booing them when they're supposed to. And then Ricky Starks brought the fire so they were like allowed to cheer for him you know they could cheer for him they wanted to and they did and that's good if, if he had yeah, sucked as a he's promo. already like uh well yeah because in the ring he already sells great i mean i don't i don't know all about his like his how he is in the ring match wise match for match but i think he sells good he shows he can do the promo work so i'm ready like let's do it yeah and plus i heard he's got a big pecker so you had that, you know, now now things are getting sexy, you know? I'm going to smack that fucking mole off your neck. <laughs> your fucking nose is a different color than your body. He was really obsessed with that. And I and by, he looks tan himself, so I couldn't tell. But that's his actual color. So I, now he was, I thought he was about three seconds away from calling him a Jew or something. I was like, oh, like, yeah, be careful. This, this, this MJF <laughs> cried about this on TV one, one week. You know, be careful. He was like, your damn nose. I was like, oh, shit. You talk about lighting a menorah, I'll light your ass up. I was like, I, I don't you know, like dude. Triple H so much you had to get his nose? Yeah, dude, I, I didn't know. Like, wh Where would you forget your small hat at home? Like, I kept waiting for some kind of joke that was going to go wrong. But, uh, no, it was fun. He had a little pecker. That's right, Jay. A little pecker. So what are you up to, man? Uh, anyway, uh, you know, that was wrestling. Good stuff tonight. Better than Raw by far. 
Um, how, how's shit going though, man? What's up with you? Like right, regular wise besides wrestling. Same old shit, man. Just surviving. We keep on striving, surviving. Remember that's what the guy who attacked oh, Randy no, Orton no, said? Striving, man. You know, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's the goal, but not quite there yet. <laughs> Do you remember the guy that punched Randy Orton in the balls? He said that I keep on shining and surviving. Oh. Oh, I don't know. I remember the balls thing, but I don't remember the fuck. The oh, ball. no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It hurt. He hit me in the fucking balls. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, so ran. Yeah. He punched Randy Orton in the balls in South Africa, the little African guy. And then, yeah. he, then he cut a promo at the police station where he said, I don't care, Randy Orton. I'm coming after the briefcase. I'm coming after that. Oh, my God. Yes. I keep on <laughs> shining, surviving. And then he ripped off his shirt. Yeah, he went Teddy Hart for a second. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like the Teddy Hart of South Africa. Uh, uh, did you fucking see that uh, that Dangerous Breed shit? Not yet. The Teddy oh, Hart, yes, the, there's like the a documentary. documentary. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I heard about it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, oh it's out? I can see it now? I can watch it? It's on Peacock, uh, all three parts. Oh, yeah. shit. I'll watch the shit out of that. I mean, he's a fucking fucked person. I would love... To- I would love to see that. Yeah, it's pretty fucking crazy, quite frankly. It's just like, whoa. Yeah, Teddy Hart's wild. They should do a Just Incredible one next. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fuck, I... Uh, yeah. T- Fuck, t- dude. <laughs> they should put those guys in a cell together. Fuck it. Well, Teddy Hart's at least good at, like, sort of advertising or... Uh, not advertising the word, but... Teddy, good, Teddy Hart is good at promoting his <laughs> fuckery and faults. You know, like he actually can promote his fuck ups, whereas just incredible. Yeah, but then when you watch this thing, you realize that all the shit that he's promoting, it's all bullshit. Like he's just a fucking liar at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, but just incredible that he really is just fucked, and you don't even know about it. Yeah, really. So I actually feel bad for him though. Yeah, I know he's got a real. <laughs> yeah, he's got a real. I mean, I hope he's... I don't know what he's doing now. I hope he's doing better. I haven't really heard much from him. Yeah, because you what? When you did that interview, that was what? Two, th- shit, oh, three years ago, yeah. maybe? Two? When I did that interview and then, uh, you know, two years before that and two years after that, you know, I would watch as he sort of self-destructed all over the place. And uh, then he got better and self-destructed, got better and so, you know, so it was just a mess. And yeah, that interview, I wouldn't even, dude. You know, it's fucked if I won't release it. Like, I won't even release it. And I have it still. I have. Yeah, maybe when he's like on his recovery and he's actually doing well for a while, he could like fucking, re- he could use that interview as like a, it's, it's, you know, from the bottom to the top kind of story. Like, it's, a, it's also, is where I started from. And <laughs> it's not so coherent either. That's the other thing is it's sort of like him really babbling. Wow. You know, he was and he was babbling so much and saying such crazy stuff that I sort of like let him go. It was it was like Alex Jones in Ye or whatever, Kanye. The only difference is Kanye was funny. You know, this just incredible what or PJ Polanco was more like sad and like in the background saying like shut the fuck up like to his family and you know, drinking and and just being like, you know, and they like trailing off into nothing, like saying like, you know, in life, that's what I do, you know, and then things get fucked up and all. And if I have to fuck someone up because of this, it, well, I'll, you know, this is going to happen. And uh, my yeah, movie, this cameos were like, oh, my God, <laughs> <laughs> what is can imagine his cameos like, hey, Ben, like they all start like for a second about the person, but then they go into his life. Like he'll be like, hey, yeah. what's up, Ben? It's uh, just incredible, formerly ECW champion, whatever. Anyway, your buddy John reached out and said that you know you needed a pickup, or you needed a hat. You know something's going on. Anyway, you know something's going on with my life right now too, man. I get it. You know you're going through changes, like. But yesterday. I was like, listen, I had enough of my fucking girlfriend, and I was like, dude, I'll bash your skull in, and I don't care. You know, I don't care if your kid sees me do it, you know, and I'm in a bottle, you know. I'm in a bottle now, you know, right now I'm into a bottle. And I was into a bottle yesterday, and here's the thing, man. To take a break out of my day, 
come on here and leave you a cami cam call cam cameos cameos message you know that's what it's all about bro and that's what these things are all about man so anyway i just drank a fifth of vodka damn me to drive <laughs> you know that song hey um <laughs> uh man thanks for being a being in this fan of all these years to be saying hi and stuff so yo seriously man big fucking praise to you dude like for being there and listen dude if you some, don't let a fucking guy fucking tell you what to do man with your life that's what i say you know what i mean i fucked up my life man i don't give a fuck anymore you know if i have to fucking kill somebody to eat if i have to fucking you know bust the skull so that i can get good sleep my girl can shut the fuck up so i can go to sleep you know that's what i do anyway man um it's your buddy it's your boy uh fucking just incredulous uh peace bro hope this cameo you you, you take it use it let's go all right i'll see you that's the cameo every cameo is like that he's just fucked and then he calls back like hey did you pay me <laughs> I can't hey did i get did i get paid for this cameo i don't even know Oh my god, <laughs> dude! I, uh, but that's a just incredible cameo. I fucking oh well, my god, dude! I wish I wish his he's I wish he was on cameo and he really did do that. His cameos are probably like nice. Well, that's a pro he probably is on cameo. I would you think, think so? Right? Let me Everybody look him up. Did. Oh my god, he is on cameo! Oh. oh my god, bro, he's on cameo, dude! Holy fuck, you're not <laughs> kidding, Jesse. Oh, if they're <laughs> they're never gonna be anything like what I just did. Let's listen to what they really sound like. Hold on a second. Man, that is awesome. I wish you the very, very happiest of birthday. Now that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best. Ghetto D, you my friend are just incredible. Happy birthday. Oh man, he's like normal. Like it's totally not what I was Still doing. Hardcore. Fuck. Fuck. I thought and by the way, Justin, if you're watching, I love you, bro. Hit me up. We should do a podcast. Um, again, when you're sober. Okay. Dude, he sounds all clear and shit right there. Just incredible. It's incredible. And you know, I want to Sounds like Ryback. It's me, uh, Justin. Yes! Yes! Yeah, Yeah, it's me, Justin Ryback. <laughs> it's me, Ryback, Ryback Incredible. It's me, uh, Justin Ryback. Dude, uh, I'll be sitting here trying to think who he sounds like. You <laughs> fucking nailed it. Holy shit. It, it's, it's me, little Ryback. Um beating Quentin's ass at fantasy football. I'm telling you, man, there's nothing better than beating some shit-talking son of a bitch. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> Listen, brother, I know you've been having a rough year. It's only going to get better. Me too. God I'm going to kill you. my wife. Kevin, you're not just the coolest, and you're not just the best. Happy birthday to you. You, my friend, Dude, truly see, I'm telling you, he must, so he must have gotten sober. There's no way these things would have been, these cameos would have been this Danny, clear. From your boy, Frank. I um, mean, unless he used the cameo money PJ, to get um, stuff. I know you've been going through some stuff, and uh, I feel really bad. I hope this finds you in, in a good way, and I hope it cheers you up. Um, you know, things Aww. will get better. What a nice promise. guy. Hey guys, it's the hardcore icon, WWE and ECW superstar, just incredible. Hit me up for your own private message. And, uh, yeah, see, I think he's doing better because he did not he sound like this when I last talked to him. Well, I mean, you know? it, going how bad he was going, you either die or you get better. You have no choice, really. There's only so long you can go down that road, unless yeah. you're me. He's, he's not that far <laughs> away. He, he, he doesn't live that far away from me, I don't think. So... Oh yeah, he's in the northeast, right? Yeah, he's somewhere out there. Um, he burned some bridge. I mean, he really pissed off some people a little while back. I mean, you know, when he got in a, he fucking, a lot of people I know actually he was fucked up at a show. You know, um, man, fucking who hasn't from that era? Like. Had yeah, everybody fuck. has. Yeah, everybody has a bad night eventually, you know, or gets fucked, you know, something bad, you know, whatever the fuck. Everybody has a bad time, you know, a bad moment. Except New Jack would be like, "I'm into fuck him over, fuck that motherfucker." <laughs> I forget where he lives now, but uh, I think he's far. Oh yeah, he's in Connecticut. Yeah, he's not that far. He's close to Jake. Connecticut. Connecticut. It's me. 
That's so funny that we were just Dude, talking about him and he really just made a cameo not that long ago. Fucking. Did, did you see the Tony Khan uh, fucking thing today? I did, yeah. yeah. And or he, hear it, rather. And I was talking about this a week or two ago and I remember, I, you know, I, I couldn't help but get narcissistic about it. Because people were like, literally, there were some people who were like, fuck you. William Regal's not leaving anything. And I was like, really? And then Tony Khan literally today says everything that we've been saying for two weeks. I'm like, oh, thank you. No, I mean, it's been out of the bag for a second. Yeah, that's I mean, what I, that, I feel uh, like. It. I know, like everyone had, like most people had the news. Like, and, and so I knew, I believed it too. And people were like, no, you're fucked. And I'm like, no, this, what? This? And then, But he really clarified it today. But yeah, you're talking about, what else did he say that we didn't, I didn't mention a lot of stuff he oh, said. Oh, I mean, the shit, I didn't realize like, I mean, he, we knew about all the changes that have been going on and all the fuckery, but we didn't. I didn't know about his mom and all that. Yeah, the stuff about like, his mom was crazy. Like, that dude's through a lot of shit. Like, I feel bad for the guy. Like, yeah. fuck. While trying to juggle this, like, I mean, make no mistake about it, the guy's trying to really run and really does run this company by himself, even though he has help and other other people can run it. But he is the main creative mind making the decisions, and when he's not there... You know, and other people have to go with whatever. It's going to be different. And, you know, Vince ran WWE for how long? And, 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 and honestly, it was the best when Vince made all the decisions and was hands-on from the 90s and 80s. But once he came off the wheel a little bit in the 2000s to now, you know, it's like you can see that it becomes a little bit more of a, you know, different show. But so, yeah, so for Tony to go through that with his mom... And then have balanced the show. And by the way, the show wasn't doing very good at those times. I looked up the times that that was going on. A lot of stuff makes more sense now. I mean, the guy was... Did he say how long he was really out of it? I didn't really catch that, like four four weeks or six weeks. I forget. Mm. Oh, you mean you mean with his with mom? With his mom, yeah. Yeah, I think it wasn't in the last, like, weeks or so, or like the last two months, maybe, at the moment. Yeah. I couldn't remember. She had exactly. two things happen. Like she had a fucking, then she had a stroke, and then she had a heat stroke yeah. after that. That's crazy. So but she's getting better, I guess. So that's good. Cause fuck, dude. I mean, just think of all the stress he has to go through with all the other, just with the shit we know about, and then to add that to it, it's like fucking give the guy a break. He's trying. Especially, and I mean, and he doesn't really have like. I mean, I don't even think you could trust Jericho these days. And the people that he has are his like right hands. They don't fucking. Can you even trust them to to fucking run the shit? Really? Well, I mean, dude, that's they, the, the, that's the thing. The elite. How can you like, dude? Without Tony Khan, if the elite was running stuff, dude, can you imagine how they'd bully people that they don't like? I mean, they're the click, basically. Um, they're already yeah, because they're already doing it, and it's like yeah, fuck. Yeah, listen, if they like you, well, they're, they're sweethearts, but. Yeah. Oh, I own the Ring of I Honor stuff. Like uh, the Ring of Honor stuff, they're finally doing that, too. They're getting rid of that shit. So that shit that I, yeah, you know, was, yeah. I was ranting on that a long mm-hmm. time ago, too. And now it's been, oh, you know, the ring. we're going to move away from Ring of Honor. Where's the TV deal? Huh? Dave Rose? You know, remember Dave was like, well, oh, actually, it's great. The, the said, deal's uh, coming. Are going to make that announcement? I don't like, know, Like, after bro. Saturday? I don't know. You wrecked your doing car? Doing basketball like he, dance off the concrete. Oh, I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. Oh, man. I'll Pizarro. be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Hey, Joe. We got another upset in the World Cup. Morocco beat Spain in penalty kicks. And Damn. then Morocco guy did the Jaden Waddle celebration after scoring the winning penalty. Soccer players are now doing the Waddle now. Jesus. The fucking waddle. Oh, dude, I, I see the waddle. I'm going to throw up on myself. But yeah, AEW, a great. Dude, it's all that Moroccan hash. That's why they're doing <laughs> it so good. And they're putting it up their ass, too. Um, No, AEW, yeah. AEW okay, is really cool. good tonight, man. I give it I give it a 7.5 out of 10. You know, I, I'm tempted to put an 8, but it can't. You know, I'm thinking of attitude error stuff and things. I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, are you looking forward to the fucking. Uh, or... How much is ROH this weekend? You know. You know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to watch Ring of Honor because I'll be at work on Saturday, so I don't know. Um, I'm it, just, I'm still trying to think whether or not it's going to be worth it or not because they've really only talked about like what 
three main matches or some shit. Yeah, I that mean, they're really advertising. Not a lot of promotion, but also, I don't want them to promote it on AEW really. So what what I'm surprised is that they didn't have more commercials. You know, why not do more yeah, of those? Yeah, no, I don't mean on AEW. I just mean I wanted them to sell me on buying the fucking thing at least. Like, give me more of oh, an well, idea. Well, they were more. I, you know. I mean, listen, all they cared about, and I appreciate it because they should, but mostly mm-hmm. what the most, and they did sell it at the end of the show tonight. The ass boys sold it, but, um, or tried to sell it at the end of the show with the dog. They sold it with the dog collar match. The dog, oh yeah. Did you hear yeah, about yeah. that? So that was the, that was the last yep. thing you saw on dynamite tonight was double dog collar match. The Briscoe brothers, like, here we go. So that was kind of, a, that was a huge sell, but, um, I think that they really were pushing winter is coming next week. They did a good job from the beginning of the show till about the end. It was all about winter is coming, and they did a really good job. They did a better job building to that than their pay-per-views recently, I feel like. But then, funny enough, after all of that, the last 30 seconds of the show was selling the Ring of Honor pay-per-view on saturday so this is kind of funny man but uh, anyway so i i I I give them they did good i think they did a good job of getting everything in without pissing me off so the one thing that confused me was i thought that i didn't know there was that it was going to be a title match already i thought that they uh i'm talking about mjf i thought it was just for the fucking diamond or whatever the ring oh yeah yeah yeah, i get you yeah i know it's yeah i thought that was all it was too originally but I, i i don't know yeah, I put twenty twenty. I, just, I in the don't title. even know shit about it. I, I wasn't watching back when the that was a thing. I don't even know how MJ MJF got it. So I was I was shocked that they're even doing a title defense early. Well, he could but, he could win the ring again. He could win that goddamn ring again. Hey everybody, um, I don't know, man. Good. Any uh anything else you wanted to mention, Jesse? I mean, we're kind of coming in. No, nah, I'm I'm surprised Dave's not here. I was hoping to hear what he thought. That's true. Actually, you're right. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Dave probably, God, he would have, I, I hope he saw it tonight because after all the shit that we've been watching this past couple of weeks, you know, I hope he mm-hmm. saw this because this was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Like, now, I have, I'm sure he'll watch it, give his, his fucking uh, side of it whenever the fuck. Diablo 4 is coming. Uh, what? Dave, get ready, Jesse. Get your PC going. I'll have to get a PC. But wait, is, that, is it like for real this time, or do I have it's, to get another phone? It's coming in April. <laughs> Probably coming uh, in April. That's yeah. Fuck. I pl- I played we'll it. For, I played it for the last month. I played the closed beta for the last month. I couldn't even talk about it. So how is it? Like, uh, how, what would you? Yeah, what would you say about it? I like, mean, I would say that it's to it's the like, rest of them. It's like um, it's more of the roots of it. It has a little bit of Diablo three in it. It has a lot of you know a bit of yeah. quite a bit of Diablo three idea in it, but it's also more of like a Diablo two style. So it's like if Diablo two and Diablo three had a baby. I'm gonna leave this briefcase. He's back. Oh no, it's Allison right Tuckwab. Here. I'm gonna leave this briefcase. Oh, yeah, right so it's like Diablo here. two and three had a baby, everybody. It's gonna be great. I think. We'll see if I like it. Run, run, you fat I've had no time really to play it. You know, I've had access to it. Run, 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 you fat bitch. You're fired. Vince McMahon is here. Run, you fucking fat bitch. Why you gotta be so fat? Don't you think I'm a fucking oh, Yeah, I said talk. Wow. Bad bitch. Your tracks today. Never run so hard in all your damn life. Run, you fat bitch. When Darby Allen did that dirty fall, I thought Sting would come running out to check on him because I thought he was his mentor. Well, you know, yeah, I, I don't think that they were looking for that in the story. I almost, Allison, thank you for the donation. Again, Allison, I would think that Sting might have come running out because he was really hurt and they had to come up with something. That's what I was kind of worried about. Like, I'm glad he didn't come out, actually, because I feel like this was no. 
perfect the I, way I it really was. like the Samoa Joe match. I, I thought it gave Darby like Darby's fucking great. Like I really think th- I'd like to see them actually do another match, maybe at a pay per view or some shit. Yeah, dude, this was really good. It, it gives Darby more credibility, I think, uh, even though he's... Oh, yeah, and it makes Samoa Joe look like a motherfucker. Like, he uh, looks like uh, a bastard. It's great. I mean, I was concerned when Samoa Joe went into the stairs. Yeah. What? Yeah. Really? Joe has an intru- has a history of being injured, so anything that could potentially injure him badly, you know? Well, anything, yeah, anything I mean... could do that, and, you know... In the ring. I was worried about Darby. Like, when he fucking threw him into the fucking uh, the ring apron there. Yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, now I get what people are thinking well, about, well, like, Darby better watch it, out. He's Jesse, fucking you're forgetting. A fuck. Jesse, you're forgetting. Darby Allen, Park Gumby. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Park <laughs> I've got fucking Gumby reference, really? How, how, how are you how feeling, Dan, after COVID? Is it finally going away? Um, I I took my first, uh, you know, test oh, after the initial test, and I tested negative. So I'm gonna Good. take that. I'm gonna take that for what it's worth. So you survived COVID pro- twice now. Yep, and, and I I have my case stack, so oh. I'm happy about that. There you go. I love it. Survive COVID twice now. Me? What? I couldn't taste. I couldn't taste anything when I was on when I had COVID, Jesse. It was fucking horrible. Uh-huh. I get you know, fucking. It must have made sucking dick not so fun, huh? Oh, you know what's funny um, is you, you would know all about that, wouldn't you, Jesse? Well, yeah, that's why I brought it up. You know, when Leah <laughs> got COVID, when we all got COVID, Leah got COVID, and her COVID, like nothing really happened. But then she lost her smell and taste for like three days but nothing else happened that's the funny thing oh it didn't go beyond that like, no she had like sni- right she away? had some sniffles and s- like that's about it and then she lost her well, no, but smell. i hear that people lose their taste and smell for like a long ass time yeah even. she only lost it for okay it might have been <laughs> she might have lost it for five days but it was gradually coming back within that time but yeah i know some people that lost it for three that's months good. to six months oh i told joe if i lost my taste for six months i would pull you <laughs> what? Cut your cock off? No, I killed myself if I lost my teacher thing. Oh. oh. Well, you little creme brulee, you. Um, <laughs> I'd like crack you and let you melt in the old wood. <laughs> oh, shit. 90s car wood, guy. Jesse. Not only was 90s car guy in an accident and in the hospital because of it, now he's caught COVID in the hospital? Jesus. <laughs> Dude, you get in a, you get in a and car. I, you and get, I thought I had bad luck. Dude, you get in a car accident, you go to the hospital, and then you get COVID in the oh. hospital. That's gonna oh. be scary. I mean, I'm you're gonna be all right, man, no doubt. But that that would scare you. Like that sucks. You're dude. You get blasted. You're in the hospital, and then you get fucking COVID while you're there. Fuck. Now yeah, it's like. I had the it once. The most sterile place, and you still get it. Like it's, it's not. Uh, no, I. I think the op. When I think the hospital, dude. I think it's like the most fucking disease ridden. Like. Well, like, I mean, it is to a degree, but it also it's is. Like, it's kept cold. It's kept like they. There's. They keep things sterile. They do their best. To, you would. You know. It's. But it just sucks. You know, because you could get a stat. You could get infections anyway. Oh yeah. It's never good to be in the hospital too long. I don't know how long they were there, but to catch the COVID, but. That just sucks. Hope you guys hope you feel better, man. No, he, yeah, he just got in there for an accident not that long ago, I think. Oh, he caught it right away. You treated like you have AIDS in there. Yeah, listen, my wife had MRSA once, and it was like seven. Oh, that's it. it was seven years later or whatever, and they never verified that she lost it or got rid of it, even though she did. Like you kind of have it forever, from what I understand. Yeah, so like, if when, I'm not mistaken, when they were in, well, did they have to like test you to make sure it's not active or something like that? So, when she was, we gave birth to our first kid. They had to come in the room. They found out that she had had that, and they started coming in the room. Dude, they came in the room with bees' nests on, like in full, yeah. like like crazy gear. Oh, hazmat. Yeah, and it was like, yeah, it, it was annoying. It was like, dude, what? Like, how you didn't. I didn't know this was a problem. Why? What the fuck? So yeah, had... it it doesn't mean it's active, but you definitely, I do believe you carry it forever. Like at least a friend of mine who had it, I know that that's 
what her situation is. That's crazy. But all, but all they have to do is yeah. test it, from what I understand. So if she went and got tested, and they tested for it that it's gone and it's definitely gone, then you're fine. Oh, good. But because they never tested, we never had that done. Uh, they had. Oh, to this wear was the way suits. back when, like when you had. Gavin? Yeah, this is 2009. Oh wow. So it's yeah, that's it no weird. fun. That's no fun to fucking have. Yeah, she felt like shit because she was like, "Oh, this is I feel like shit," and I'm like, "Yeah." It sucks. <laughs> Dude, she sounds like she's fucking stronger than all of us. To, like, fucking <laughs> yeah. get the fuck out of here. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's, no, she's nuts. Yeah, she's definitely stronger than most people. She's crazy. <laughs> oh, it's like, I'm not fucking with her. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, Leah's wild, dude. I don't know. She's... So, Dan, what'd you think of this show? Did you like it? Uh, I, it was okay. I mean, it it good for TV, you know. As opposed to what radio? No, opposed to like pay per views and stuff. It was a good, you know, free TV show. Oh, fuck no, yeah, I get you. Um, I, 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 I think it's a tie between the acclaimed and uh, the Samoa Joe match for me. Hmm. Hmm. That's fair enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That's good. Some really interesting development for the pay-per-view. The, apparently, Wait, did you, what about the, the Regal Dog Collar match or something? Yeah. Oh, did you guys see the Regal fucking yeah. interview? I thought that was a, a good way to, um, I don't know, it was a good way to go considering the situation. I brought it up uh, a minute I ago. I just spent like 15 minutes on it basically saying like, you know, it reminded me of when Bobby the Brain Heenan was kicked out or when, the, you know, it was, it, was, it was like one of those farewells. Like, they clearly didn't record it two weeks ago. You know, they they recorded oh, it. Oh, fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> and Tony Tony Schiavone had to keep saying that, too, to be like, you know, that way people realize that he's, he's still hurt somewhere. He's not coming. You know, and I filmed that two weeks ago. He kept saying that. I was like, okay, no, you didn't. But yeah. this is great stuff. Well, you know, I love it. He's like, if something goes, if something was to happen to me, you show this. He, yeah, his accent was coming out real big too in that, real thick. Yeah, they they filmed it two weeks ago. That's why uh, little Timmy saw we were walking into the building. It was great. I love it. I <laughs> love that they said that. The Con, Tony Khan today on that thing said that. Uh, well, no, never mind. He said they were going to address Regal tonight. He made it sound at first like he was going to be there. Yes, he did. Yeah, but, and yeah. he kind and kind of was in a way. He had said. That was in the back. It's funny. He, he, he went it, there. Well, it he answered, was in catering. It answered that question because it because Jesse, you brought up a great point. When I heard Tony Khan say that earlier today, I was like, "Oh, so Regal is going back to WWE," but we, which we knew, but all, but he might have another week or two of stuff that he's doing here. So I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's what and, I thought. And then instead, oh, it was <laughs> oh, we a video yeah. that they'd already recorded. So that made sense. You there know. is one thing I didn't understand because I don't have Twitter on that Tony Khan thing. He somebody asked a question and he said, "Well, we've been really accommodating to him, so I don't understand why that Triple H thing on Twitter had to happen or what, what, what happened with uh, Regal or some shit." You know what? I don't know. I don't There's know. Something, he going uh, back something to on Twitter. WWE. Yeah, we know that. Well, but I know that. He's talking about something else. <laughs> he's saying there was some kind of it drama. It sounded like they rubbed it in Tony's face or something because the way he said it was. Well, we accommodated them. I don't, I don't know why that they had to go and do that, but whatever. It's because, going to be resolved. Uh, it was because upset. Uh, I read yeah. something about Regal thinking that the management was immature or something. Hmm. He said that out of his own mouth? I, I, can't, con- I, I, I can't confirm it because it's the dirt sheets and shit, but you know. Yeah, no, yeah. Everybody's saying that. I was just, that was the only thing that this morning when I heard that that I didn't understand of like, Whoa, shit! What the fuck was it that pissed? Because I could hear Tony. He was, he was very nice about it all. That they brought that one question up. He was just Jesse. Okay, did yeah, you, we were we were nice to him, but whatever. Did it you hear? Did is. you hear this? Classified documents were found alongside oh, yeah. wrestling belts in Donald Trump's storage unit. <laughs> oh fuck! I didn't know that. <laughs> so Donald Trump's keeping his WWE belt gift belts or whatever the fuck. Oh my God. Stuffed in there with documents <laughs> from the White House. 
<laughs> this is the time I beat uh, Vince McMahon, gave me the, the WFWR title or whatever it is. Also, he, also, here's who killed Kennedy. <laughs> like, it's just all sitting there. Well, he, I mean... Let's face it. He probably had the he probably had the ECW belt, given that he teamed up with Bobby. Oh man, Bobby! Thanks for the belt, Bobby. It's the ECW belt. Oh fucking! I remember that Lashley. Yeah. That's a fucking hilarious headline. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna need some. Of that. I mean, dude, like, yeah, maybe he should get back into wrestling and get a good paycheck. Oh, I guess triple. Uh, Triple H posted the War Games Regal thing, I guess. Huh? I don't know. What do you mean War Games Regal? Oh, because what? Because Triple H posted the other day he played. Uh, oh, because I know what it is. I know he's okay. Now I figured it out. I know he's exactly what he's talking about. So when okay. when WWE Survivor Series War Games happened, Triple H posted out a promo. Of Regal saying war games, war games. So it was Regal basically saying, you know, war games from the past in NXT. So I don't know, Tony Khan maybe took it as like a you're kind of making people think Regal might be coming back for war games or that sort of thing. I don't know. I get it. I get it. Because of the time of it all, like it was like it was. He probably felt like it was intentional and yeah. un- unnecessary. And that was probably the minute that he that he had just talked to Regal. So he had just talked to Regal about, okay, you go back and I'll let you out of the contract. You're good. Yeah. And then Triple H almost like after finding this out, immediately was tweeting Regal so stuff. And so Tony Khan was like, "What the fuck?" But I mean, for all we know. That's one of those things that you don't know. For all you know, Triple H would have tweeted that out anyway, just because yeah, I mean, like it, war games and it almost, it almost sounds like either way, Triple H would have tweeted that out to fuck with Tony Khan. Right. Maybe, yeah. but I mean, I just didn't realize that. I guess it was very last minute that Regal let him know because he sounded he basically the way he put it this morning was a. It really caught him off guard. He thought that Regal, because of everything Regal was doing in the last weeks, he really didn't think he was not going to renew. So it all kind of hit him at once, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Cornette, I think, what is it? Cornette said that most likely, because everybody has a one to three contract with uh, AEW, from, I mean, I don't know if it's confirmed or not, but it sounded like in this contract, it was like, hey, if if I can get my job back at WWE, then like that's basically I'll, I'll stay in. So unless I can explain this. He had, he had a, he had a three year deal, but he had a one year deal with a two year, uh-huh. with an option option to extend it for two years if he wanted to. Um, and the one year deal wasn't over yet, you know, so nine months he's leaving. So he's essentially jumping ship three months early, and he's obviously not taking the extension. So he, so he's getting parole, basically. Um, yeah. Well, but but see, what here's the thing about that. I don't believe that now that I think about it. That's the report that I had read and heard s- several weeks ago, and I believed it. But now I don't believe that because I don't know if I believe it, but it could be true because that would mean then that you really have a one year contract and you're leaving it nine months, but now you're going to put into the new, the altered contract that William Regal is allowed to leave without having to honor the next three months, but he can't be on TV for a year. Yeah. So that's yeah. a weird thing sort of, but I guess that's I, I the think compromise. That's what they did. Well, that is, I, that I is what I, they I did. Feel, yeah. That is what they yeah. did, but it's like, but okay. but what we don't know 100% is was the contract for 3 years or for 1 year? Cuz if it was for 1 year and with an option, well, I mean, he could have just stuck it out 3 more months and then left and none no worry about anything. But the fact that he's leaving at 9 months and asking to go back and all the specialty and stuff like that makes me think that the contract wasn't just a 1 year plus 2 year extension. It makes me think it was 3 years. Because why else would you need to ask to leave now 
and then you're not allowed to go on TV well, for a year to have some kind of compromise. So, it, do you know what I mean? Like, it's interesting. Well, well, I think the one year thing is just. I mean, isn't that what they all do? It's like a non compete kind of. But he's also he's allowed to go and coach and things. I mean, yeah. he only fucking joined AEW because Vince fired him out of fucking. No, I would have thought right. that he would have made it clear, like, hey. And, and I bet he and he knew that because Triple H probably called him. Hey, hey, William, you know, as soon as I'm back, you know, as soon as we figure something out, you'll be back. Don't do anything crazy, you know, that sort of thing. I'm sure Triple H did that with a ton of people. But but even Triple H didn't know he was going to take over. But I'm sure Triple H was like, hey, you know. Don't sign anything crazy, you know. I'll try to get you back, you know. But I'm, sh- but he didn't know. Once Vince was le- once he knew Vince was leaving, that's when he was probably hitting everybody up, like, hey, you know, I'm gonna be in charge of some shit. You know, I'm bringing you back. Try to get out of it. Tell him you're gay. Oh, Jesse, your mic just shit itself. You've been talking. I, I don't hear you. <laughs> that's so weird. I've never seen that. Yeah, me. Oh, no, he's, he's muted. muted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Regal, um, but Regal will work. Don't back- nothing, Jesse. Regal. Will- huh? Oh, you're back. Oh, there we go. Re- Regal will work yeah, yeah, backstage. I, mean, like, I was saying you're right. Why didn't Regal stay? Because, I mean, the fact that they wrote him into the story so strongly right now, I don't see what the harm would have been to stay another month or so. And I mean, at least leave on a better note where you could finish. So it didn't leave them in the fucking lurch, you know? Well, I don't think he did. I, I mean, think he really, this was a kind of a perfect way to leave. Everything's working out fine. And he kind of, I don't know, I think this helped them. I mean, the only reason I could think he wouldn't want to stay is he really hates the elite. Like that dirt cheat well, article. I mean, yeah. No, the reason why he wants to leave is so he can be next to his family and live in Florida without having to really travel that much. And um, that's, I think that's really what it is. It's not mostly. And, and if they're disrespectful, like if they're not really listening to, to talent that's older and that knows what they're doing, and, and that's what we've heard is yeah, a lot of, I you think, know, then why the fuck would you stay? They're a bit immature. I think he, I think the funny thing is they, they really respect Regal and they really give him that sort of respect in a way, but. I think that Regal gets more respect in a, that he's looking for in WWE because he's valuable and valued and he's part of it. Where in AEW, he was less part of it than he really re- thought he would be. Great. And, yeah, that's actually the a perfect point. I think yeah. you're 100% like, right. Like, and, and he sees them as immature, which is not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just that they're very immature and Regal's like, damn, they really don't have a, a solid system. Anything can kind of happen from week to week. You know, so I'd rather go back to where it's kind of like, you know what I mean? I have a lot of control, and but things are also well controlled, and I'm next to my family. Well, yeah, I mean, you this don't know how chaos. long you're going to do this for the rest of your life. Like, you fucking want what you do to count. I mean, I fucking know that's how I like to do things. I don't want anything wasted. Like, if I'm going to put everything I have into something. I don't, you know, AEW, you can't do that. It's just not the same system. Yeah. So. The, the, you, cool. you don't even need to be there to know that like I can tell by watching I can tell by the wrestlers interviews when they're gone from there when they're there you can tell by certain people that some people they can't deal with the with the sort of variable backstage and env- with the variable environment AEW is such mm-hmm. a variable environment WWE, you know what you're going to get every week when you go to work. You kind of know how the system is. It's mega filtered, and you basically know what you're doing. Um, Now, you have more rules and laws and things in place and safety net because of that, but you know what you're getting. And for an old-timer who doesn't really, you know, necessarily want to have to deal with all the drama and the kids and the craziness and week-to-week variables... So William Regal is probably more stressed than AEW. You know, that sometimes they don't listen to him at all. They listen to him. They tell him they respect him, but they don't really, yeah. you know, give him a well, piece of Punk the pie. Too. Like, Punk started out looking so happy. Like, yeah. he was very excited, very happy. And then you look at the end, and it's just like, he looked as, as unhappy as he looked when I saw him against Ryback, like, front row at a house show. He looked unhappy. He's dragging the belt. 
he was so unhappy at the end of his run in WWE. That's how he looked at in AEW. Yeah, he looked like end. a mess. He, the apparently pictures of his dog went on Instagram or some shit. Nude ones? No, mm-hmm. like like showing where the teeth got knocked out and shit. Well, the dog also looks old, which they fall out. You know what? But I would still say they fucking that they knocked him out just because fuck him. I think that CM Punk <laughs> stepped on his own dog on purpose. How about that? Write that fact down. And there you go. How about that? There's a fucking tidbit they... for you. Listen to that. Send that to CM Punk, huh? I think you stepped on your own dog, you sick bastard. I mean, um, he wouldn't sign an he wouldn't sign an autograph for an autistic dude. So I believe right. it. Well, you never know, man. What the? What, I mean, maybe the autistic dude was an asshole. Saying, <laughs> maybe you might be right. Nineties uh, <laughs> car guy talking about TNA backstage. Now listen here, you crippled, you crippled prick. TNA hates Joe Cronin. I'll tell you that. <laughs> TNA, TNA hates me. Yeah, Impact Wrestling. They Everybody hate me. TNA, fuck, fuck that owl. Fuck that owl. They hated me back then. They fucking missed out. God damn you, TNA Impact Wrestling. You could have had me as the voice instead of Josh Matthews. God damn it. What are you doing? They went what the with fuck Josh. happened? With, they, with wait, 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 wait. They went with Josh Matthews over you? No. I that mean, was a mistake Well, he's and there. Half. He's there. I'm not. That's, I mean, and, I, and, I, and I stand by my, not, my statement earlier. Yeah. Anyone that they WWE fucks up by choosing Vic Joseph over you because we all know he can't commentate worth fucking shit. Josh Matthews is an okay commentator, but I would rather you be there. There we go. Because th- then TNA would actually be watchable. Hey, those guys play ball you know better what? than Joe. You know like, what? You know? I'm going to buy two tickets to Impact, Dan, and I want you, I'm going to give you a kendo stick. I want you to jump the <laughs> rail. Jump the rail and just start beating people with the kendo stick. And, and I want you to, your stomach... You're gonna have no shirt on, and it's gonna be spray painted Cronin rules on your stomach. Can you do that? Just assault everyone with a kendo stick. And bring, bring a rape out. whistle. Yeah, bring a rape whistle too, in case Karen Jarrett's there. Exactly. Start screaming, "I'm autistic!" and beat the shit out of him. Uh, that way they just, can't touch you. Yeah, just yell, "I'm autistic," and that will get you out of it anyway. <laughs> later on, like, you'll be fine. Trust me. <laughs> Hey, listen, I got to buy Christmas presents. Anybody wants to send me a million dollars, paypal.me slash Joe Cronin Show. Paypal.me slash Joe Cronin Show. Paypal.me slash Joe Cronin Show. All right, Jesse, guys, I'll, you have a good night. I got to get up early. All right, brother. You guys are the best. Jesse, love, right, you. love you. Dan, brother. Kennedy, good night, boys. Have fun. See you, Joe. Somebody figure out where Dave Rose is. He might be dead. I'm, con- I'm concerned. Peace out. He was he was dead. I'm sure Dave Rose loved this show tonight. He must have. I'm giving it about a 7.5. In spirit, an 8. But I'll give it a 7.5. AEW Dynamite tonight. Couple of thumbs up. Must watch tonight for AEW Dynamite. Next week, it's winter. Is coming. And I'm coming too, if you know what I mean. Um, thank you to Soundwave92. The largest donation of this stream was $31 from Soundwave92. The brand new Drunken Santa Claus donation, or not brand new, it's old one, but it's back. Got too drunk on Christmas throughout the rest of December. Uh, $25.25, $25.25 the rest of December. Make sure you remember that one for Christmas time. PayPal.me slash Joe Cronin Show. Send me a million dollars. Thank you very much. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show on Patreon. If you want a bunch of bonus content, thousands of downloads, Corrupted Podcast, episode 1 to 189,000 that we did. They were amazing. Go listen to them. You'll enjoy them. The Corrupted Podcast on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Become a $25 producer or just become a patron for a dollar. Whatever you want to do. Thank you to Skittles for signing back up again. $25 producer Skittles and Sith Negan, who's a $100 patron, as well as Todd Fayer. And also the other $25 producers like Brian Jardine, Alan Stober, Snark Bake, Colonel Stutters, Dion Edwards, Stevio, James Beggs, 
V-Man, Nikki J, the Weed God, Drew Bar 100, Matt Rossmeyer, Alex O'Donnell, Kel Alabama, and of course the $100 producers, Todd Fair and Sith Negan, the mega ones, take us away, Lord Regal. Welcome to the desk. Thank you very much, Taz. Hello, sir. Mr. Shivani. Hello. Man in the mask. How are you today? Doing quite well, you sir. little creme brulee, you. I'd like to crack you and let you just melt in there. I would, honestly. Already. Oh, yikes. We're rocking and rolling. You little creme brulee, you. I told you we're starting out hot, guys. <laughs> Uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone. Uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the on Twitter's fucking pathetic so please nobody listen to anything involving a guy named Joe Cronin because it's just so fucking sad why don't you eat the cheese out of your mother's vagina before you kill her <laughs>